Today's date is Tuesday, March 18th, 2014. It's approximately 18.02 hours. This is uh, Detective Jeff Stone with the Albuquerque Police Department. And uh, we are here at the Family Advocacy Center at 625 Silver Southwest. Uh, this is uh, an interview in reference to an officer-involved shooting. Uh, reference case number 14002683. And um, present in the room, we're just going to go around the table. Officer, or I'm sorry, Agent Hal Cage, New Mexico State Police Investigations Bureau. Anthony Sedler, uh, with the Albuquerque Police Department, Tactical Session SWAT Team. Uh, Dominic Perez, Albuquerque Police Department, uh, SWAT Team, Tactical Section. Uh, Luis Robles, the attorney on his back. Alrighty, and we are here interviewing uh, Dominic Perez, reference this incident. Um, Dom, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you the floor, man. Just let you run through everything that uh, you did during this incident from start to finish. <coughs> so right ahead, man. Okay. Uh, on the on the list of day on March 16th, uh, I was at home, um, sitting with my family. Uh, we had just gotten back from uh, uh, from a lunch. We usually go there on Sundays uh, to have uh, lunch with my uh, wife's grandparents. Um, we had just gotten back, and uh, I was sitting there uh, with my, my mother and my grandmother. They were actually came over because my birthday was earlier that week. And uh, they wanted to give me some presents or some gifts and hang out with kids. So we were sitting around the table uh, talking with my family, and I uh, received a phone call um, on my city phone and uh, went to answer it. Uh, caller ID, it was from my uh, uh, supervisor, Sergeant Fox. Uh, that was roughly at uh, about 1845. <coughs> I uh, picked up the phone. Uh, he advised me, asked what I was doing, and just that uh, started to give me some information that he had a situation that was happening in the foothills um, that he wanted to start sending some tactical guys to to uh, see if we could help out with before uh, it potentially had to go to a full uh, SWAT activation. So. Uh, he gave me the limited information that he had because he said he was in route there also. Uh, gave me the directions, the rough rough directions up into the foothills. Uh, I got off the phone with him and uh, he just told me that there was a, a subject that was armed, threatening officers in the foothills. Um, I was like, all right. Uh, I got off the phone, let him know I was going to be in route. Uh, immediately went and uh, got dressed out in my my SWAT uniform, uh, made sure I had everything uh, as far as that I needed from the house, uh, went and uh, uh, kissed my wife and kids goodbye, and my, my mother and my grandmother, and told them a quick goodbye, uh, and then went outside to my unit. Um, got in my unit, uh, turned, on my, uh, turned on my KDT, and started trying to uh, log on, uh, and started en route to the area that I knew from the directions that Sergeant Fox had given me. Um, it takes a little bit for my KDT to boot up. Uh, so uh, while en route, though, from the time I left the house till I arrived at the uh, end location, uh, 812 Piedra Vista, um, I was reading the remarks on the call, trying to gather the uh, information from what was going on with the situation, and uh, started reading through the remarks. Um, Pretty much everything that uh, that I had received uh, from reading on that said officers were dispatched to a call um, in reference to a a suspect who was uh, legally camping uh, in open space, uh, which is a crime. And upon trying to contact the subject, they had uh, the subject had pulled out knives on them and adva advanced on them in an aggressive manner, uh, and also that they had backed off from the suspect and we're trying to establish a perimeter. <coughs> so reading that information, I, 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 read, uh, or I was reading pretty much there was a lot of information on the on the uh, KDT that I was trying to gather as I'm en route. Um, the, uh, the supervisor there had identified the suspect as uh, James Boyd and asked for further information. In regards to that, also on the remarks that they were also trying to get additional resources there uh, with uh, less lethal options and CIT officers. And uh, the 
the supervisor, after identifying or saying that the subject was uh, James Boyd, asked for further investigation or, or further information on James Boyd. Um, there was uh, information listed on the call that James Boyd had uh, an extensive criminal history. Um, in the past, had been willing to use a weapon to harm police officers in multiple jurisdictions, um, including Albuquerque. That he was a paranoid schizophrenic, uh, and that uh, officers should use extreme caution when contacting him. So after reading that information, I started. List I was listening to the radio as well uh, while I'm en route for any additional information with uh, the approach route, how we should get there, or any information from uh, uh, my supervisor on uh, should he be arriving before I did uh, of anything he needed in particular. Uh, the uh, information with the radio, and then I was also reading remarks on the call where that the sub or the suspect was shouting at officers that he was going to kill them. Uh, that if anyone got close to him, he was, uh, they were gonna, somebody was going to get hurt. He, he was wanting to be called uh, the boss or, or something like that. Um, but he stated that he was militarily trained and, or this is the information that was on the call, that he was militarily trained and if officers got close to him, uh, they, he wasn't going to be the one who got hurt. Um, There were uh, other officers that, or the officers that were present, given the information that I was reading, uh, were saying that they were that the subject or the suspect, excuse me, was uh, throwing rocks at officers. Um, all this information I'm gathering there, and then also trying to listen to the radio. Uh, the other aspect, as far as the approach route, it was told that you could just drive right up to the 812 Piedra Vista. Um, because it was taking place uh, somewhere behind that. I end up uh, arriving to the scene and uh, exit my vehicle. Um, I see a bunch of uh, marked police units and I'm trying to orient myself on where, where the situation is taking place. So I walk over to a, uh, I'm not sure which uh, the, the numerical was, I walk over to like a stucco house and it's in, I'm looking out towards the east in between two two structures, two houses, and I have visual of a of a figure standing on a uh, like a rock formation, uh, or kind of oriented to the south. I can only see about from his from his uh, knees up. Um, it's now I'm trying to orient myself on it, so I see him and trying to identify what the subject is, or what the suspect is, or if this is a suspect, excuse me. Uh, I then look over and notice that there are other uh, people around the area, and I'm starting to identify who are the officers and where they're positioned. Um, so I then like ascertain basically that that uh, is potentially the subject who it is. I then realize because he's shouting at the uh, officers that are to the to the south, he's shouting at them and having some type of dialogue with them. Um, he, I, looking at the overall layout of the of the terrain, everything, he was definitely in a position of advantage over those officers, and the, the terrain there was very rocky and and rural and uh, didn't didn't look like there was a lot of. Uh, cover and, and concealment for officers to be able to position themselves. Um, so I was looking at that for my assessment to, on how I should approach, um, depending on where they needed my help. I walked over from, from there, having gathered that information, walked over to my SWAT sergeant, um, checked, it, checked in with him really quick, and just advised him because I'm also trained as a sniper observer if he wanted me to deploy in a high ground capacity in a sniper observer position or if he wanted me to join the arrest team. Um, he advised me that, uh, or he told me that we already had one of our teammates that was deploying in that capacity. So for me to just go ahead and uh, dress for the, uh, the arrest team and to go uh, join them. Uh, went right back to my vehicle and uh, started dressing uh, dressing out for the arrest team, uh, putting on my uh, equipment, uh, my SWAT equipment, which in, entails a variety of uh, options, less lethal options, um, and an overall 
uh, equipment that's needed for any type of uh, police situation. Um, Now, to include, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of all of this, uh, to include like noise flash, diversionary devices, uh, uh, electronic restraint device, my taser, um, my helmet with uh, a recording device, light, um, night vision equipment. Because it was getting dark, I, I thought that there may be the potential that this could go past uh, into, the, into the dark hours. So I want to prepare, be prepared for that. I, I took my night vision equipment with me. Uh, and then grabbed my rifle and uh, joined my uh, my team leader uh, Ramon Ornales, and we we walked up to uh, the, the place where I moved up to uh, to observe the situation mm -hmm. and try and get my my bearings. Uh, we walked up in between those, uh, which was like on a side yard, and walked towards the back gate, which opened up to the to the mesa. Um, <laughs> Upon walking up to that, I'm talking with uh, Officer Ornelas. We're trying to I'm trying to help him and orient him on where our uh, resources are, where the subject is, because at that time the subject was now out of view. Um, I pointed towards the um, rock formation that the subject was using as like a hiding or a cover position from the other officers, uh, and he was able to look at that area and orient himself on that. And then I talked to him about where. Uh, the other officers were to help with containment. It was a very uh, spread out containment due to not that much uh, terrain for cover. And while I'm talking to him, uh, Sergeant Fox is uh, standing there at the back gate and uh, talking to uh, the arrest the arrest team that was to the south and asking if they needed any further uh, uh, less lethal options. And he was advising them that he was about to send two uh, two operators up, myself and and uh, Officer Ornelas, uh, he's motioning to us like to go ahead and start heading up. So we move up to his uh, spot there at the uh, the back gate. <coughs> uh, we're now at this gate. It's about a, about 100 yards to the base of the hill that uh, the suspect is halfway up that hill on that rock uh, formation. So. I start to, to walk off to go join the arrest team and the information is now coming back from that arrest team that they would uh, like um, further less lethal, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, basically a, a bean bag. They're requesting a bean bag okay. um, shotgun be brought up. Uh, I immediately turn around and said, I'll, I'll get it. And uh, but start or excuse me, uh, officer analysis like I'm closer. I'll just go grab it from my truck. So I stand by for a brief minute, um, but then uh, make the call to uh, uh, or just look at Sergeant Fox and let him know I'm going to go ahead and head up, and Ramon can join me. I'm just going to move up. So he's good with it. I start moving across the terrain uh, and focusing on the area. Like I said, it's starting to get dark now, and I'm just trying to pick the best path uh, to get up there, the safest path. Uh, I'm, as I'm walking up, uh, I get to about the base uh, of the hill, and there's a kind of like a, a larger boulder that I see a state police uh, behind and also a APD field officer, it appears to me, and they're oriented towards the east, towards up the hill, uh, uh, looking at and focusing on where the subject, or excuse me, the suspect is at. Uh, I move up to them because I can tell that right now as I'm moving up, I'm focusing on them, and I'm also looking at what's happening on top of the, uh, the rock formation, and the male subject, excuse me, the male suspect is standing on there and clearly shouting and having some type of angry, erratic behavior towards the officers to the south, um, which I am ascertaining is the arrest team. I move to that uh, boulder and stop there for a brief second because it looks like there's something transpiring, like there's a some interaction happening um, that something's going to take place. The subject is grabbing his uh, some bags or some belongings, shouting but still grabbing them, and walking a little bit down towards those uh, officers to the south. 
so I wait there because I don't want to introduce myself into any potential situation that, that happens between them. So I wait, uh, then the uh, suspect changes his demeanor, gets really aggravated, throws down his bags, and begins arguing again or shouting at them again. So at this time, I realize he's not going to continue down um, towards those, uh, towards the arrest team to the south, and I, st I start picking out my path on how to get up to them to supplement them. So I look towards the south, and like I said, it's very uh, rocky terrain, and it's going upward uh, where I have to go. I have to go in an upward fashion um, towards the east. I'm coming around to the south, and I start walking through the cactus and the rocks and stuff, and walk over, coming in from the south, heading north, not too far in a bend, if you will, and start coming up pretty much to the west and uh, south of the uh, arrest team. Um, I move up, uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting pretty close to where they're at, where those, uh, that arrest team is staged at. And I start, I'm really focusing on the, on the subject because now he's trying to handle his bags again. He's still standing on this rock face, which, or excuse me, this uh, rock formation that now, in the position I'm at now, he is definitely towering over us and has a tactical advantage over us. There's nothing that we can, that I can uh, really get behind to, to provide me as, well, with cover. Um, So I'm, I move up to about a, a position that was a little bit west of them and, and, and wait there because now there's some interaction happening between him, uh, the suspect, and, and the, uh, the, arresting, the arrest team there to the south. And they're, they're having some type of dialogue. He's shouting some, the only way I can describe it is like psychotic statements, erratic statements at them. Okay. Um, saying that it would be, not to get too specific, but I heard something like he can murder, he can, it's legal for him to murder them or something along those lines. So as I'm standing there, I don't want to draw too much attention to uh, myself because they're having this interaction and I want to help them in any way I can as far as uh, supplementing a plan or anything that they need. So I move up and I pause there waiting for a pause in their interaction with the subject so that now I can move up and, and gather any information or see where they need me so I can help. I'm sorry, can I jump back? Absolutely. Okay. I just thought of something. Sure. Um, when I was, uh, when I was in, in route to the actual call, I forgot one remark that <coughs> to me is very pertinent that this, the subject had obviously been armed with the knives <laughs> and he had advanced on the other, on the, uh, other officers, but also that he had taken those knives, left them open, and put them in his front pockets or in his front waistband area, okay. uh, open, apparently, um, in order to conceal them. And to me, gathering that information in order to conceal them and then to be, have them readily available. Sure. Um, so now, I apologize on that. Jumping back forward to where I'm at um, in my position, as I was moving up into that position, I noticed his behavior and that interaction was happening between him and the, with the uh, arrest team to the south. Yeah. And because of that behavior, I immediately uh, swiped on my, my camera uh, to start gathering information. <coughs> I clicked on my, my helmet camera and I was, I was waiting there. So that interaction is happening and in order for me to best describe uh, the events that transpired now. Um, there was a lot of moving parts, a lot of uh, complexity mm -hmm. that was happening, so I'm going to try and take it in little segments to best uh, describe it for you. Sure. Take your time. So I'm holding my position. The uh, arrest teams to the south are having that dialogue, uh, talking with the subject, and he's shouting back at them. They they have uh, what I can clearly identify that they have several less lethal options available to them um, by the clear markings on the uh, the X-12 uh, um, taser shotgun. That was the, uh, the officer that was closest to me. I could tell that he was had that. We also had a, a canine police service dog. 
um, and they were there with that interaction. <laughs> now from their position, I was already at a lower uh, position to the subject. Now they're also at a lower position, but just higher than me, if that makes any sense. Yes. <laughs> There was what appeared to be like a tiny deer trail, or not really even a walking path, but like a deer trail that they would have to cover and negotiate to make contact with the subject. Excuse me, the suspect. If it helps you out, maybe you can draw it out, draw like a little map. Oh, sure. Um, so <clears throat> here's the uh, here's the rock face. Or excuse me, the rock formation, mm -hmm. and there's multiple like boulders and things like uh, really large rocky terrain down here. The suspect is about here. Can you write like suspect or sure? Yeah. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> <coughs> so there. This is. Uh, This is higher than uh, the uh, the officers who were staged roughly here. I remember there being like some type of bush or tree. <coughs> and this is the arrest team. Yes, the arrest team. Okay. And I remember there being some larger boulders here, mm -hmm. um, and then I am down about here. Okay. And there's a, a graded type, like I said, a very rough looking skinny path that they would have to negotiate to get towards uh, where the suspect is at to, okay. an effect, to an effective arrest. Okay. okay. So I'm, I'm staged here. They have their less lethal options and they're uh, oriented that way, uh, interacting with the suspect. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, I, just, I had just arrived. Uh, like I said, and clicking on my camera and waiting for that break in the uh, in the interaction, and keeping them in my peripheral vision. But now the, the but now the suspect is starting to move and gather his bags again and do some other behavior. Um, also, still talking or shouting to the to this arrest team right here. Uh, shortly after that, there was a a plan that started being executed okay. by the arrest team where a noise flash diversionary device was deployed. Okay. Okay, so the noise flash diversionary device uh, gets deployed up here, uh, roughly in this rocky area yeah. uh, near the suspect. Mm -hmm. um, observing it, I immediately see no effect, uh, or the suspect is showing no effect from it. Um, while that is occurring, I, f I am flipping on my light okay. uh, to my rifle okay. so that I could better see uh, what the suspect was doing. There was a lot of smoke and due to where the, the, the noise flash diversionary device landed, there was a lot of sand and the smoke from the, uh, that was kind of pluming up right near the, the, uh, the suspect. That having no effect, uh, then uh, I believe there was uh, the uh, taser shotgun rounds were deployed. Mm -hmm. Uh, also showing no effect on the suspect. <clears throat> I'm giving, like I said, I'm giving commands from here for the subject to get, or the suspect to get down. Uh, I say that repeatedly. Still keeping visual on on the suspect, and I'm I'm really focusing on him and what he's doing uh, with with his hands and his demeanor. I then see the uh, police service dog uh, get let or uh, uh, get deployed. Uh, it goes up to the suspect, and it, I see no effect from the from the canine uh, PSD. Excuse me, police service dog. It was it was then that while I'm giving these commands, and the police service dog is moving up, I'm focusing on the suspect's hands, like I said, and he begins to reach down into his. Oh, excuse me. Let me let me go back. Sure. The PS the police service dog is moving up. I then, out of my peripheral view, see movement from the arrest team, mm -hmm. and uh, I see officers moving up down up this trail, negotiating this trail. Yeah, uh, and they're moving uh, forward here towards the towards the suspect. The suspect at this time is not armed. 
<coughs> then, as they're starting to move up this trail, the suspect starts reaching down into his waistband area, okay. which now I'm at a heightened sense of caution uh, watching what he's doing. <coughs> They're uh, getting closer. He then comes out with two knives in each hand, help holding them kind of like in a, an ice pick grip. Yeah. And raises them up in a in an upward fashion and standing in a really aggressive, uh, like fighting stance. Um, up on the rock face, or excuse me, on the rock formation right here. The. Uh, the arresting officers are now well within close proximity, I mean, very close proximity to the to the suspect who is now standing, looks like he's towering over them. Mm -hmm. And I am gathering, like, like I said, this is like layering here. While that is happening, I am identifying that the suspects, that where, what's in his hands, what, what, what he's holding, the shiny nature from, from my light, the shiny nature and the, seeing that the, the ice pick handle, or excuse me, the ice pick uh, grip on it, I identify it as a knife in both hands. <clears throat> he's towering over them and I was now, because of the close proximity, I, I was in fear that, that's, that that suspect was gonna come down and stab uh, the officers that were right, pretty much right underneath him. Mm -hmm. It was then at that time I'm keeping focus on that on that suspect, and I start bringing up my rifle. I'm now transitioning from looking over my rifle at the suspect and bringing my uh, rifle sights up into my line of sight to the suspect. Mm -hmm. While that's while I'm raising that uh, while I'm raising my sights up into my line of sight, I'm now transitioning my focus from the suspect to my red dot, mm -hmm. which is inside, uh, obviously inside my sight, so that I can have accurate and sighted fire, because it was at that time I decided to use deadly force on the suspect to save the lives of those officers mm -hmm. who were in close proximity to him. Transitioning, like I said, transition to my red dot sight and place that in what I had was a uh, gray sweatshirt from the suspect, uh, placing that center mass of that uh, available target area. Yeah. And then also looking through that and focusing on that site, watching my peripheral view of the officers that are in close proximity for their safety so that I do not hit them. I'm keeping that, uh, their position in mind. I then disengage my safety, place my finger on the trigger, I then deploy, I believe, two to three rounds, uh, coming out of recoil uh, at the target location, coming out of recoil, uh, keeping my red dot sight on where the subject was standing with the two knives over the officers. After coming out of recoil of my final round, mm -hmm. I see uh, the suspect turning and falling away from me, out of my view, falling down, face down. I then bring my rifle down out of, bring my rifle down out of my shoulder and look over my sights to now assess the situation in which I cannot see him anymore. I see the officers are there. Mm -hmm. I engage my safety on my rifle. Uh, I then negotiate over this boulder that I was right in front of to try and Actually, it's right here. I come up over this boulder, and then I'm starting to negotiate this train, which is like in an upper angle here, and start walking up to get online with the arrest team that's uh, that's right here. So okay. they've moved up to here. Can you just put like movement for them? Sure. And they do another thing for movement to your position where you shot, and then movement again. Okay, so. <coughs> movement, and then. From here, this is where I shot. Okay. And then I moved up this terrain and came up to here. Okay. Do you want me to label that as movement also? Sure, yeah. Because okay. I won't remember in two months. Sounds good. Okay, so I'm now here and I, I come moving up to where those uh, the arrest team is now uh, up here. Mm -hmm. I then orient on the suspect because after I had after I had engaged or fired my my rounds, 
the threat was not there, the imminent threat was not there anymore, but the threat was still uh, posed by the suspect because I came up to here and I could clearly see that the suspect was laying face down, but he was still clenching a hold of both knives okay. in, in both hands. Now that I'm in this position, uh, I hear and I'm assessing the situation. I hear that the other officers are also announcing on the resting, they're also announcing the knives are still in his hand. I'm looking at it also. I then hear beanbag, beanbag, beanbag. Uh, the beanbag rounds are deployed uh, on the suspect. Mm -hmm. um, I see them uh, impact uh, the lower area of the, of the suspect and I see no, no result, no movement uh, from it. Uh, the police service dog was then used, uh, and so the dog is uh, moves up on the on the suspect and, and uh, goes in on I believe his legs. Uh, I see no movement other than what the dog is uh, uh, doing to the suspect. Non-verbally, the the uh, motion is that we're going to move up mm -hmm. to start taking the suspect into custody. I move up directly from here, straight at a straight line to the suspect, and come in over, come in over top of him, if you will, uh, from his legs. So his head's facing north. Uh, I come in uh, from his legs that are facing south. Uh, stand over him and keep lethal coverage on him because the knives are still in his hand. Gotcha. Uh, one of the officers uh, comes around and begins comes around, excuse me, and starts. Uh, placing him in custody. Mm -hmm. After uh, he's placed in custody, I make sure that there's lethal coverage uh, standing by with the other officers uh, and that, or, that are dealing with the suspect. Mm -hmm. I then move from there uh, with another uh, officer over here to the rock formation where the uh, suspect was standing, yeah. just to further clear the area okay. and check for any other individuals. After uh, clearing that, uh, I uh, turned off my camera mm -hmm. because I knew I wasn't going to have any more uh, interaction. Uh, I knew I needed to be separated. I knew I was involved in a, uh, excuse me, in a police-involved shooting. Uh, I walked down the hill, uh, which my sergeant was right, was right there. I identified. I told him uh, I was involved in an officer-involved shooting. Uh, and I knew I had to get separated. So then I went and got separated, staged away uh, in a vehicle and uh, stood by to be handled administratively uh, by criminalistics. Um, that, uh, there I uh, stood by until I was uh, processed by criminalistics. Okay, cool. I'm just going to go back and just um, go over certain things. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I didn't hit on this before, but uh, Dom, what's your man number? 5036. 5036? 36, yes. And uh, what's your call sign? 716. Okay. And um, how long have you been on the department? Uh, about eight years now. Eight years? And you are currently assigned to which unit? Uh, the SWAT team, Tactical Section, uh, Special Operations Division. Okay. And how long have you been assigned there? Uh, about five years now. Five years. Awesome. Okay. Um, you had mentioned that uh, you know you were hanging out with your family at your house when you got this call. Um, did you put your uniform on when you were at the house, or did you do it when you got uh, to the scene? I put it on at the house. At the house, okay. And you had mentioned that the uniform is like a like an OD green uniform. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a two piece uniform uh, with a, a blouse and trousers. Both of them are green, and they're. Uh, the shoulders are marked with uh, Albuquerque Police and SWAT team. Okay. okay. All right. And um, when you put your tactical uh, vest on, is that also marked up? Yes. Okay. I have a I have a placard in front of that says Albuquerque Police. I also have a, a badge um, on the front there. And I believe I also have a. No, I don't have a placard on the back, but I have I am marked up on the on the vest itself. Okay. All right. So um, the entire time you were out on scene, um, you were displaying all those badges to present yourself as a police officer? Yes, sir. Okay. What kind of vehicle do you drive? It's a uh, Chevy Suburban. Okay. Is that marked or unmarked? Unmarked. Does it have uh, lights and sirens? It does. And um, briefly run through me again what equipment you were wearing on your person at that time. 
Not the guns, just the other equipment. Okay, uh, I have uh, noise flash diversionary devices, mm -hmm. um, electronic restraint device, taser. Okay. <coughs> uh, additional uh, ammunition for my rifle, for my primary weapon system. And additional additional um, ammunition for my secondary weapon system, my pistol. Mm -hmm. uh, also my gun belt with uh, handcuffs, and of course my pistol. Excuse me. Um, a uh, set of uh, flex cuffs, so disposable handcuffs, if you will. Gotcha. Um, my helmet uh, with night vision equipment, uh, personal recording device, my camera. And uh, I'm sorry, I have a, I have a pouch with the, um, I'm a member of the breaching team, so I have uh, breaching rounds. Breaching rounds? Gotcha. That's what I did not deploy with my breaching shotgun because <laughs> there was no structure, so I left that behind. But you have the rounds always readily available? They're always on my kit. Gotcha. Uh, and then I have uh, uh, an accessory pouch that has uh, <laughs> chem, chem lights, chem sticks for marking certain gotcha. things. Um, and that, that would be, uh, excuse me, clear eyes and gloves uh, for personal protective equipment. Okay. And you say clear eyes, is that like um, ballistic glasses? Uh, uh, something like that? Yes, for uh, fragmentation, so if any any type of debris or anything keeps that out of your eyes so you, your eyes don't get hurt. Got you. Okay. And uh, what guns were you carrying at that time? At that time I was carrying my... Uh, SWAT issued, my department issued a SWAT rifle, mm -hmm. uh, which is a M4, um, and then I had my uh, secondary weapon system, which was a Glock, uh, Glock 21, which that's uh, personally bought. Okay. Uh, throughout that incident, did you ever pull out your Glock 21? I did not. Okay. So the uh, M4 was the only weapon you used? Correct. Okay. And uh, you said that your helmet was outfitted with a helmet camera? Correct. So when you were going in route and you said that you'd uh, turn on your KDT or you were going through the call, um, were you aware of any charges that this guy had from the previous incident with the other police officers? Uh, I knew that they were, that they had contacted, that they went to contact him and, and uh, in reference to um, illegal camping on, a, on the open space. Yeah. So they had they had that or that charge that they were dealing with and then with contacting the suspect he then advanced on them with knives so then there was the uh, aggravated assault on a police officer on a police officer and uh, that charge is a felony yes that is a felony okay <clears throat> so when you arrived on scene um you said that you had parked did you park on a residential street? Yes, I, I parked on the, the primary street, the Piedra Vista. Piedra Vista. And then you went through the backyard to get to the open terrain? I did. Okay. Um, just kind of go through what you observed as what the, what the terrain looked like where you were having to go into. Okay, so from, are you talking from the back wall of the? Uh, yeah, just like, um, okay, I'm sorry. describe what the foothills look like okay. up there. All right. So uh, from the back of the from the back of the residence, uh, residence as I was coming out, uh, it's a big open or uh, about 100, 100 yards of open mesa. Mm -hmm. That's a uh, very uh, rural, up and down, lots of rocks, lots of cactus bushes. Uh, that's known to happen in or that's known to grow in uh, New Mexico mesa. Mm -hmm. um, the the hill. The base of the hill is about the 100 yards away, and then coming up the hill with multiple boulders and rocky terrain. Um, directly uh, in, in the middle of it, if you will, from where I was standing, is the, the large rock formation where the suspect was at. So that, uh, and then above above him, uh, that rock structure, or excuse me, rock formation was uh, smaller boulders, smaller things like that. But the whole uh, hill in itself was. Uh, Rocky terrain, uneven terrain, bushes, lots of cactus, uh, and it was very open mm -hmm. um, uh, in all directions, actually to the north and the south, very open, and then of course going in an upward motion on the hills to the east, um, and then it all opened up back down towards the residences that backed up against against it there okay. on the foothills. All right, so um, up in the area where you were having to walk up into, was uh, was it relatively steep terrain? Yes, it was 
definitely higher than than where uh, I started out. I mean, there was a big a big climb to go across the main, excuse me across the mesa, the open area, okay. and then up the hill. Uh, I can't even. Uh, really guess at the the, the angle, I mean sure. the, gr the grade, if you will, but it was a pretty steep, pretty steep, steep grade. <coughs> okay. You mentioned that when you got out there, um, when you're scanning to see where the suspect is, your your attention is drawn to this guy who's up on the, the rocky area that you indicated on your uh, map. Yes. yes. And you said he was irate or yelling. Yeah, I, I couldn't make out what he was saying, but it was clear that he was shouting at the officers that were here at this, uh, to the south and arresting. Okay, so based on that, it was pretty apparent that he was probably your suspect? Yes. And you'd mentioned that the officers that were to the south and lower than him, you would refer to them as the arrest team? Yes. Okay, uh, did you know or did you immediately recognize any of the officers who were up there at the time? Uh, not, not initially. Uh, because as when I came up to this position right here, my initial point when I got right here, mm -hmm. this tree was kind of blocking my way to walk up to them safely. Okay. So I was going to have to come forward towards the, the suspect to come back around to see them. So I just had visual of, of them and uh, couldn't really see their faces because they were oriented towards the suspect. It wasn't until I was actually finishing up with the situation, uh, resolving the situation that I actually saw who they were. Okay. And uh, when you first moved up, did you notice if one of them had a police service dog at that time? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I saw that the, the canine, there was a, a canine handler over here. I could see the canine, but I couldn't really see who was kneeling down at first mm -hmm. uh, over here. Okay. Um, you know, you mentioned that you've been on the SWAT team for about five years. So walking into uh, the, the area that you were at, even though you couldn't recognize the officers, seeing that kind of how they were positioned and with the police service dog, did you recognize them as as like an arrest team, forming them as an arrest team? Yes. Okay. You had mentioned that you had deployed also with night vision? I did. What was the lighting condition like at that time of day? <coughs> it was, I would say, right at sunset. I mean, it was getting, it was getting dark. So from when I first arrived and I was orienting myself on the situation, it was already starting to get dark. Okay. Um, and then from my movement to this position right here, like I said, it was, it was going dark, more dark, uh, by the time I got there. Okay. So I, I could tell. Uh, for, for reference, if you will, I could tell uh, how much darker it had gotten since I had gotten there because when I initiated my light mm -hmm. um, and the distance I was at to the suspect, when I initiated my light to, to illuminate the suspect, um, it was definitely very vibrant. And in normal daylight settings, you wouldn't see that. Okay. Um, it, it would kind of drown out in the daylight, so right. it definitely projected a, a, good, a good amount of light. Okay. Um, so with that, up there in the foothills area, is there any um, lighting that you would see like in the city, like on the streets? Are there any lamps up there that would turn on at night once the sun goes down? Like where you were? Did you notice any like... Uh, out in the rural area? Excuse me, out in the foothill? No, there was nothing, nothing that I could see. Okay, no. so if the sun was to go down, uh, the only lights that you guys would have out there would be like the lights that you have on you? Correct. Okay. Yeah, we, we would have to we would have to illuminate probably with uh, our means or have to figure out some way to illuminate the area by ourselves. Okay. So if if this incident was to progress into nighttime, um, being now that you're up in the rural area in the foothills, how would that be different than if you were down here in the city as it progresses in the nighttime, like with the lighting issue? Well, with the uh, we're definitely not close to, um, uh, I would say, there's already that 100, 100 yard distance. Mm -hmm. We're not close to sockets or anything like that so that we can establish uh, uh, individual mounted lights, like just posting up lights to illuminate the area. Um, the terrain wouldn't allow for our vehicles to <coughs> orient themselves in a way to actually light that area up. Um, <coughs> the uh, 
with with the uh, excuse me with the in the in the city in the in the uh, urban area, you already have the ambient light, the lights from other from porches, from houses, and things like that. Uh, and you can actually pull vehicles up, and you can orient spotlights and things like that, mm -hmm. um, and actually get some good uh, feedback from those lights. Um, due to the distance, that it, it was going to be very open, it was going to be very hard to see the suspect. Um, uh, if it went, if it progressed into night, it was gonna be very hard to see him. He could actually uh, duck down behind the, duck down behind the rocks and potentially pop up right next to a perimeter unit or right in front of another officer, and they wouldn't even know it because of the terrain and how open it is. Okay. Um, when you move, when you moved further up, closer to the arrest team, and you said the the guy was still sh uh, shouting, were you able to make out anything that he was saying to the arrest team? Oh, when I move, uh, I'm sorry. When I move from yeah, here to here, or yeah, when when you're up here a little bit closer to um, to the area, and he's shouting, did you ever? I guess at any time, did you ever make out what he was saying to them? The only time I actually was able to make out what he was saying was uh, when I first initially got there, gotcha. um, and uh, was waiting for that pause between their interaction, and he was making that something about that it would be legal for him to murder them or, or something along those lines. That was about the only thing that I heard. Other than that, it was. Uh, uh, statements that I couldn't clearly couldn't clearly, clearly understand. Clearly understand. Okay. You'd mentioned um, about containment. Based on your training and experience, especially being a member of the SWAT team, when you are going to effect an arrest on a subject, is it typical in your training to set up a perimeter and contain a, a subject? Yes. Okay. And why is that? Uh, because in order, in order to uh, effectively uh, take that subject into custody or that suspect into custody, we need to be able to not let him get outside of the perimeter, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and keep it, keep the situation uh, close to close to us, so that we um, are protecting the public from getting out of that. So protecting the public from that suspect getting out and uh, potentially hurting. Uh, other people in the public, or even other officers that are in an outer perimeter. Okay. Um, so we. Did I, did I clarify? I'm sorry. Yes. If I yep. didn't, uh, no. Please did. rephrase the question so I can better answer it. I apologize. No, he did. Um, so given that, and, and if you could indicate on, on the map, I know this is rural area, but to the west over here, you said that you had initially parked on on a residential street. Mm -hmm. Could you just kind of describe or draw like where the, the residential area starts? And it could just be like a line. Well, in regards to where this is at, it would be way, this is actually, if we, I was trying to do it as far as distance, this Mm -hmm. Would be the edge of the wall. Okay. Then there was the re uh, the residence here, and then the street is like right here. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. And so we could say like right here was the gate. To the residence that you went through? Yeah, that I went through right, about right here. Okay. And this whole area down here, are there a bunch of other houses down here? Yes. Okay. And uh, what what day was this? What day of the week? Um, Do you remember? Uh, Sunday. Sunday. Okay. And you said this was uh, when the sun started to go down, so it was in the evening time? Correct. Okay. When you arrived, did you notice if there were any... Uh, citizens out did you see anybody like out near the residence or anything like that no when I actually I did when I first arrived uh, there were some residents or some people walking uh, their dog on the opposite side of the street uh, where I pulled up mm -hmm. and when I first initially went to I was at this house here and went to go look uh, and orient myself when I came back uh, after checking with Sergeant Fox, I went back to my vehicle and they were actually walking on the other side of the street here, uh, just a male and a female, uh, kind of looking at, wow, this is a crazy situation, Okay, is what they, is what they said to me. Okay. You, you briefly talked about uh, this. Okay, we're back on the record here, um, 1916 hours, uh, still interviewing. Uh, Officer Dom Perez. Uh, Dom, do you have anything else that you want to add that you think might be important? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to be uh, wanted to be clear on uh, on some of the uh, 
less lethal options that were deployed um, in my uh, in the order they were deployed, okay. if you will. Um, I don't think I covered it in such great detail, so I just want to make sure that, that it gets out there. That First, I, I observed the uh, noise flash diversionary device that was deployed by the arrest team um, that uh, had no effect. Then after that, there was the taser shotgun rounds that were deployed that had no effect in that in that order, and then the K-9 police service dog was deployed, which also had no effect. Okay. okay I just wanted to be, uh, clarify the uh, I didn't think I covered the X-12 or the, excuse me, the, uh, the taser shotgun in, okay. the, in the order which I, which I saw them. Um, <coughs> also, I wanted to be clear and actually uh, finish up all my explanation of my reason to use deadly force. Mm -hmm. um, due to the, not only everything that I've said about the close proximity about of the of the officers and the uh, to the suspect and him being armed and his posture and his uh, intent and weaponry that he was standing there. The but I just want to be clear that the uh, due to this suspect's uh, criminal past and his um, willingness to hurt law enforcement officers in the past, uh, be it armed with weapons. Mm -hmm. That I I felt that I had no other choice than to use deadly force. I did not think that that suspect was going to stop there and just stand there with his knives, due to his extensive criminal history. I felt that he was going to lunge forward and stab those officers, or potentially even kill those officers. Okay. So I just wanted to be clear on that. Okay. All right. So. Uh so just so I can understand, so based on the knowledge you had gained while going en route to the call, um, the fact that they were updating officers on his past criminal history and the fact that he had had uh, uh, attacked officers in the past, based on the fact that um, the noise diversionary device, the flashbang had no effect on him or appeared to have no effect, and the fact that uh, the taser deployment appeared to have no effect on him, and the fact that the police service dog deployment appeared to no, have no effect on him, and that he armed himself with the knives even after all of that, um, that you believe that you had no other choice than to use deadly force. Correct. Okay. I understand. Is there anything else that you think that I should know about? I believe I'm good. All right. We'll go ahead and conclude the interview at 1920 hours.